What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass, enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beale. Greetings, Earthlings. It's Kathy Beale of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with another episode of Celestial Compass. We have special guests today, but I'm going to start first with a very brief update of the October forecast. You can find my full forecast at omtimes.com and at my site, empowermentunlimited.net. October is a really hopping month. It's extremely intense. It's a month of revelations, of getting very clear on uh, a lot of different things in our lives, of our perspectives, flipping, changing, pairing back priorities, and very drastically and intentionally restructuring many a uh, many a relationship, many a connection, many an agreement. You could be this week especially rewriting your relationship rule book with a scalpel, basically. We have a Libra full moon this week, which is in Relationship Central, but it's got Mars, the planet of push, smack on the new moon. So we are highly, highly motivated to get moving on all of our new concepts of how we're going to coexist with each other. Libra tends to not to like to be particularly pushy. It likes to make suggestions and hope you get the hint, um, but there'll be more pushiness than normal going on now. The whole month will have, as I mentioned, a lot of revelations and really critical, important things coming to light, partially because of Mercury being retrograde in the sign of Libra, partially because uh, Mercury is making multiple contacts at the beginning and then next month after it comes out of the retrograde with Pluto, the keeper of secrets, the ultimate power force in reality, basically. And Mars is going to have the same clash with him uh, on the 21st. So we'll be moving forward a lot on things that come to light on our shifts in perspective, in news that comes out. And the news that's been happening right now, as I'm talking at the very beginning of October, has completely fit the concept of this uh, dredging secrets, the concept of revelations. Uh, there is a party atmosphere coming, though it's not all really scary stuff. Venus is moving into the sign of Sagittarius tomorrow, which is party central. And I would, I'm seeing it already. It's going to kind of be one protracted Halloween party for the rest of the month. So dress up, have fun, enjoy yourself because. The spooks are coming out, the secrets are coming out, the goblins, the ghosts, all those things. May as well dance with them. And that's what I have to say about that. So look for more. Go to Om Times or to my site, empowermentunlimited.net. And my forecasts are both in both of those places. And now for the main course. I am thrilled that Amy Zerner and Monty Farber are back on the show this time to talk about an oracle of theirs that's coming out very soon called the Wild Goddess Oracle. Uh, for the three or four of you who are unfamiliar with my guests, I will give you their official bio. Since 1988, husband and wife team Amy Zerner and Monty Farber have created their family of best-selling spiritual power tools, metaphysical books, and oracles that help you navigate your life path. 
There are nearly 3 million copies of their works in print in 18 languages. Some of their popular titles are Karma Cards, Signs and Seasons and Astrology Cookbook, Sun Sign Secrets, and Astrology for Wellness. The one that introduced me was the Enchanted Tarot. Uh, Monty also does private readings and teaches ongoing astrology classes uh, to show his students how to uh, to read charts. And Amy also designs the most incredibly gorgeous clothing that when Instagram is active, you can see on her IG account. So thank you so much for being with me again, Amy and Monty. Oh, thanks for having us again. I love your... Um idea your prediction to party while you're gaining new perspective that well why like not a, a juggling. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and dress up while you do it and isn't it nice of the news of the day to completely back up mercury retrograde with uh you know instagram and facebook and whatsapp all down today after a secret rep was revealed and all of a sudden boom the plug got pulled and here's the funny thing. Facebook Messenger actually made a public statement blaming it on Mercury Retrograde. <laughs> wow, times have changed. Would you ever have believed that when you first started studying astrology, oh. that it would be so... And people know the rising signs, they know when Mercury's retrograde. and That is so it's amazing. It's kind of cool, right? Oh, God, I can't believe they did that. That's I know, great. I saw... I know, I just started laughing. <laughs> uh, Oh, well. Uh, well so, hmm? I was just going to say, there's six planets retrograde now. The only ones that are not are Venus, Mars, Sun, and Moon. Everything else is retrograde, so it's not surprising. I call it yeah. retro-rama. It's retro-rama. We can learn a lot. <laughs> we can learn a lot with this. Yeah, you know, People from the past come back. I saw someone over the weekend that I had an intense, crea a, a Libra. I helped him celebrate his birthday. I had an intense creative partnership with uh, in the early 90s. And um, right. yeah, yeah, so you, you, you revisit all kinds of things. Yeah, everything, for those of you who want to know about retrograde, just think anything with R-E. Remember, retreat, reactivate, re re right, resurrect, you know, anything with re resurrect. And, yeah. I mean, as, well. as, authors, as authors, we're really always editing, editing, and going over and eliminating and checking and being very careful that everything is perfect. So um, we're kind of used to reviewing, 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 and reevaluating. Well, speaking of resurrecting, that's kind of an interesting segue into your new baby that will be available to the public soon, the Wild Goddess Oracle, a 52-card deck. Um, what I'd like to start with is, can you talk a little bit about the process of deciding what your next project is? Did you How, how did you decide on wild goddess well during the pandemic uh, i mean oracles are our gift our mission it's what my and i do and have done for a long time it it sort of pulls the creativity out of us and it's a wonderful project i like to really immerse myself in a project so when the pandemic ha happened and we were all feeling so scared and um disempowered and unsure and fearful i wanted to create something that empowered me. And I feel like the energy that I put into my artwork, um, you know, help, hopefully, you know, helps other people feel that energy. So it was very healing for me. And as I started this project, one of our publishers contacted me and said, do you have an idea for a new oracle? Because I have someone, a uh, publisher, who's interested. I'm with a new publisher. And I said, I, yes, I happen to have, you know, a great idea. It's called the Wild Goddess Oracle. You know, it's one of those magic projects that just uh, everything clicked. It was right for me at the time. It was right for the publisher at the time. And uh, they were wonderful to collaborate. It was like a new team of people that we worked with. And it just... It's gorgeous. I just threw myself into it. And what is the most healing aspect of it is I stepped into the shoes of each goddess, each of the 52 goddesses, which 
are different aspects that we, we're all familiar with, and uh, I wanted to contact all of those. And it's very diverse culturally. It has a whole gamut of ages uh, of different goddesses and um, different colors and different bath ethnicities, and it was very wonderful for me to step in. It broadened me as a person and it expanded me. Amy is a collage artist, and so every day I would come down and she'd either be cutting or pasting or gluing or, you know, when you look at them, they look like they've been done in Photoshop, but no, they're handmade. And handmade. They, yeah, and they were they were healing her, and you can't tell that they've been pasted together. Amy's a National Endowment for the Arts Award-winning fine artist for her collage work. And the way we collaborate together is I make the artwork first, always, in the Enchanted Tarot that you mentioned before, and all of our uh, oracles, Monty sees, he, he looks at the artwork. I, I kind of channel what comes through me and have confidence that, you know, we're creating the what? right thing at the right time, and he sees everything he's supposed to see, so the message comes through in his words. And, and we, we've done it many times, and each time we... We're kind of surprised how perfectly it comes out. Well, this one came out better than it's, it's, <laughs> you know. You always like the, the the last one the best, but we're we're so excited about it because it comes out. It's like an art book. It's big. There's full color mm -hmm. uh, images of the card. The cards are, are nice size for your hand, but the book has you know full color, large page size things of of Amy's work. So so we're excited about that. And and this is. I think our third or fourth goddess project, I've always been a feminist, and I've always thought women got a raw deal ever since I was like five, six years old. And so the introduction to this one is basically a fight song for <laughs> for women. You know, it's like, use, get in touch with the wild goddess within you, and, and let's renegotiate this raw deal women have gotten for the last few thousand years. Well, taking it to... Um even more simple starting point than this lovely introduction to it. When you say wild goddess, what did you Im initially think of? Because if someone were to pick this deck up and start flipping through it and look for Athena, Diana, <laughs> anything like that, they're going to go, I, I don't recognize any of these goddesses, but that they will, they just won't be names out of myths. How did, yeah. well, how did you settle done, on the we've concept? We've done that. Our first Goddess project came out in 1991. It was called we, Goddess Guide Me. And we've done, um, we also did something called Gifts of the Goddess. So in the 70s, I, I started studying about goddesses, and I did a series of tapestries based on Ishtar. And then for Goddess Guide Me, we researched. There are thousands of goddesses in different cultures, you know, usually creation myths, um, and, and a lot of them sort of coincide with each other and have stories, but we picked more obscure ones. So this time what I wanted, I think all of our oracles and systems are very practical to use. So I want to tap into basic, natural lessons, laws of nature that we all encounter at different times and uh, have, have the lessons of each of them really be impactful, which, which Monty expresses in the text, you know, that it's tools that you can really use and learn from and remember and see in your life, see the people in your life. And we're all of those people at different times in our lives that we encounter. We have, the, we have one of them as traumatized and one of them as a teacher and one of them as a protector and a nurturer. And Even the humorist and, and the warrior, and we also have the warrior. So, so and I'm looking at the drama queen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know her, and sometimes we're all guilty of that. Yeah. Um, but we make it really easy. So if you've never used an oracle before, you can pick a card and your message is right on the card, and then you can go deep into the deeper meaning in the book. And we also have a ritual for each card that um, is empowering, that helps you set your intention or how to overcome whatever is going on in the situation. Yeah. I find rituals and affirmations and invocations very healing. Ours are easy, and we've always included those. We had one for each card in the Enchanted Tarot, and 
sort of it's an introduction to you know start designing your own rituals, whether it's simple, you know, with with a cup of tea where you have an affirmation that goes with that, or using a crystal, or doing something on the full moon or the new moon. Those are very effective because it really helps you set and empower yourself. Amy's very modest. The Enchanted Tarot was the first thing that ever had rituals for every card of the tarot. And she did them. Well, that, I did not know that. Well, they do help you actually work with and integrate the meaning of a card so you aren't just sort of amusing yourself with fortune-telling. Exactly. You're doing or, something. or left there the hanging, you know, if, it, if it's a more difficult card or cha- more mm-hmm. challenging card. And, you can actually do something. And, and, and astrology informs everything we do anyway. So so it's, it's, it's in there. It's not overt. But what we've learned from astrology is, is in there, and what we've learned from the tarot is in our astrology thing. But I, I well, like to, you know, we're inventive. We make up a, I, you can make up your own goddesses. Yeah, really. I had the opportunity to make up all of my well, own goddesses. Yeah, you clearly did. That's, that's just kind of what I was getting at here. Wild goddess. They're, some of them are very wild indeed. Uh, yeah. But I mostly wanted just to alert people if they were to, Get this deck. It's a, a very appealing book. If they were to see it on a shelf or uh, on a, at an online store and go, "Wow, this looks beautiful. I want to get this," and then they open it up and they go, "Goddess, who are these? I don't see Hera. I don't see Venus." Well, because these are different goddesses. They're more like raw. Well, right. they're archetypes. Yeah, that these are the goddesses that are, of us. that are within you, that are within mm-hmm. all of us. And but, so, I hold that thought. We've got a break right here. We'll be back in just a minute, and we'll continue talking about goddesses then. Want help with your own celestial compass? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, for Astro Insight forecasts for each week, month, and new and full moon. Want to explore the personal impact? Make a decision? Understand another person? (laughs) It is possible. Click the Services tab to book a personal session with me. That address again? EmpowermentUnlimited.net Welcome back to Celestial Compass. Today we have Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, and we're talking about their brand new deck, the Wild Goddess Oracle, a gorgeous, gorgeous 52-card deck with a huge guidebook. Uh, Monty just called it an art book in the earlier segment, and I would not argue. Um, getting back to the the nature of the goddesses that are in here i'm i'm still i'm just going to be a little bit more nosy about your process amy do you <laughs> have an do you have a like an inspiration for an image and work on it and then figure out oh this is what this is or do you start with uh like a concept of something you want to convey and then build it that way you know i'm very Such, um i have three planets in aries kathy like mars and aries sun and aries mercury and aries so I work very spontaneously, and I kind of like that. Um, I kind of step aside and channel. So my studio is filled with bins and boxes and all kinds of reference material and antique etchings and antique ads from all different eras, You know, not to mention all the fabrics and pieces. So I make a pile, like a, a pallet. That's my raw materials. And I just start working, and like a face will attract me, or an eye will attract me, or I need a feather here, and um, it's cutting and piecing and mixing and matching, <laughs> and then you know the tedium uh, of gluing it and perfecting it. But I also paint on it; it's very mixed media. But I don't think I, you know, I don't sketch anything, whether it's a, a big tapestry I'm making or, or smaller piece. These were small, eight by ten, small for me. And I, I really feel like the information is there. I tap into whatever you call it, the Akashic Records or 
um, the quantum field. The quantum field, and, and I feel mm-hmm. universal messages come through all of my artwork, I guess, because I set that intention. And then I have to figure it out. <laughs> it's up to Monty to kind of verbalize it, and uh, it's always all there. All the information is there. That's what the beauty of an oracle. You ask, and you get the answer. So I ask for the image, and I get it. I I love collecting imagery from all different periods and time. It teaches me about all those cultures, and I mix. I kind of put it all in a blender and see what comes out. Amy, do you ha- did you have like a word that you were using? Yeah, sometimes I for all of our oracles, I I pick a word. You know, for instance, like the warrior, and then as mm-hmm. I was searching or painting or finding the right figure with the right attitude or the right um, situation that I place the figure in, then it conveys that one word. And and Monty and I go back and forth and sort of create this um, grid of everything that we need to include so that whatever question you're asking of the cards, you're going to get an answer. We are good at it, so we kind of make sure that it's going to cover everything that a user will need, you know, because we're creating it for ourselves as much as for anyone else. Did you, I've had somebody, I I have a lot of spontaneity in myself as well, and and, and I've had someone who was heavily Capricorn uh, lecture me that if I were going to design a deck, I needed to know at the outset what my target was for the number of cards. And my attitude was, I should see what the images are that want to be in the deck and then let them determine the length. Um, Absolutely. It's very intuitive, just like the Oracle. So it has, has that from the outset. We did the Creativity Oracle, and for some reason, it ended up being 80 cards. So there you That's go. what you came... I, yeah, okay. So you, you know when it feels like it's the unit, when it's the set, and then you stop. Right. Yes, I, I, I guess it's kind of a metaphor of having a child. Right? <clears throat> you're, you're, don't look at me. I don't know. <laughs> well, you <laughs> you you have this brewing inside of you, and it has its time to be born. And what comes out, you you're not controlling it. It's meant to be what it's meant to be. So it's sort of that allowing what it's supposed to be emerge. Yeah, do your oracle. I want to see it. <laughs> oh, it's got a lot of stuff from an amusement park. I dreamed up most of it swimming in a lake. At the moment, they're like 102 cards. I'm trying to see if I should split it into two decks. So, well, you have to make sure you can hold it in your hand and shuffle. <laughs> right. I mean, as long as you're That's not right. yourself, yeah. there you go. You yeah. Know, it, it... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it's uh, mm. whack, uh, whack-a-mole is one of the cards. Uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, That's... it's life. Uh. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, you learn a lot so... from designing an oracle. When we first came out with uh, Monty's Karma cards, Enchanted Tarot, Karma Cards was like 1988. There, there weren't very many other oracles. I mean, there was... That's right. But I remember there was that. a medicine mm-hmm. card. And rune stones, and, and, and that was about it. But I can see, and as an artist, when I, when I was commissioned to do the Enchanted Tarot, I thought this, for an artist, where all of life was in the cards, to, to grab into that, and, and what a challenge. But now, you know, it's very interesting how everyone wants to design an oracle, and and you don't always know what you're going to do because I think it's just like writing a book. You don't have it all planned from the outset. The characters start to talk to you. It it becomes a dance between you and and this art piece. Yeah. We operate so similarly. It's wonderful. Uh. <laughs> well, it's a question of whether whether there there. I mean, I can see some argument for yeah, put some structure down, and sometimes your creativity will then deal with it. But I also believe that creativity can't be forced. You have to get out of its way and yeah, see what it what, what it wants to do. It doesn't want uh-huh. your ego involved. I I think because then you start to want to control or have different reasons why you're doing it. Uh, I think you know. If it comes from a pure space, it's going to have that that universal vibe to it. If, you know, it can't be all about you. Right, and the or, the oracle want will write itself in a certain d- d- direction. It'll you, know, you talk to it the way people who write 
book novels and screenplays, they ask the character, well, what would you do there? And then in their head they hear it, the character answering. Plus, I don't think it would be any fun if you planned it all out ahead of time. Of course, as you know from people's charts, everyone has their own kind of process and, you know, speed of working and way of working. And um, Monty can't have any distractions when he's writing. And, oh, yeah, good luck with that. And I love to sort of multitask like a bee going from one thing to the other. Yeah, when Amy did the Enchanted Tarot, she had the 22 major arcana laid out. She did those, and then she moved on to the, the four suits, one at a time, going from one oh. to the other. Yeah. But there is uh-huh. a structure. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like yeah. I'm a very dis- disciplined artist. You have to... You know, you have to have sort of a structure to your life and um, clear. Well, your productivity is a testament to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Really, I'm much. I don't. I don't know if I know anybody that has the output that you two have. It's astonishing. Do you sometimes have have you been partway into a deck and realized that there was a card that just really shouldn't be in the pack? No. No. (laughs) <laughs> oh, great. Then you really do just go. That's good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, well okay. Have, so you, can't over, you can't overthink it or it takes away. And I have such faith in Amy's artistic ability, which I've seen since 1974. Like when I met Amy, she was making these amazing tapestries, fabric collage tapestries. And I, I've just watched her grow and develop. And I always have faith that whatever has to be in the card is there. It's up to me to see it. Well, you're, you're a foodie, Kathy, so you know when you cook, as you become more masterful, a chef, you just know the taste and the ingredients and what it needs and what should be there. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense. That that makes complete sense. Well, this has just been fascinating. I was really curious about your process because when I saw how quickly this was coming on the heels of other things, I thought, all right, I'm, I'm just going to be nosy here. Um so let's also talk. Let's also talk about spreads. You have recommended. I mean, anyone can do whatever they want with a card. Yeah. Uh, they can pull just one. They can. I, I have my own students like draw their own spreads, decide what a certain placement is going to mean, and write it down, and then put them there. But uh, you have a, a variety of, of spreads that the uh, the user can try out, um, and not just the normal. Not just the normal one and four card spreads. Uh, your your turn on the fat past, present, and future actually uses four cards. Can yes. you talk about that? Well, the first card is the past. The second card is the present. The third card is the future, and then the fourth card is is the outcome that will most likely occur, provided you continue with what the cards are expressing in that moment past, present, and future. But you know, nothing's etched in stone. This is like reading the energy of the moment. And then your mm-hmm. reaction to a reading, it, you know, sort of helps you navigate the next stage of your path. I like to do one-card readings most of all just because I have three planets and Aries, and I like <laughs> to do things quickly and move along, you know. Right. But sometimes you, you want a, you know, a bigger picture, so, well, we, a, a one-card reading is a good way to get introduced to a deck. Yeah. Sure. But also just during the day, if you're asking this or that, or, you know, you just talk to the, the cards are your friends. They're always there to to give you insight, and sometimes you stop, you know, if you need to make a decision. I know Monty uses all of our decks when he's writing a book, just yeah. to, you know, sort of navigate that process. And we actually, uh, we have two tarot decks that Amy has done, both fabric collage tapestries, and, and the one's called the Enchanted Love Tarot, and it's designed to only pick one card at a time. And it, gives you, and to look up in the book for a very deep answer, whether it's upright or reverse. I think people get overwhelmed sometimes. I, I mean, as, as you become more adept, like you said, you can design your own spreads or you're going to have your favorite spreads or you want to do a whole year reading or a birthday reading. But um, sometimes it can be overwhelming for somebody who's new at it and you get enough information from one card, whatever jumps out at you. I mean, that's the key. The art should 
be rich enough where you can spot something, one, you know, whether it's a bird in the sky or a certain color of the flower, all these things are speaking to you at different times that are going to jump out that you'll notice. Even the words in the text, one sentence, will, make, will really apply to what you're asking and thinking about. I've seen with really intricate decks, you can own it for years and pick it up and see something in the yes. in the image that hadn't caught your attention, but at that moment, it's what's there for you. And your images are are definitely intricate like that. There could be any number of any number of little details that might come to the fore depending on what's going on in your life. Because it's a trigger for your intuition. You might know the answer anyway, but this is like a, a tool that that helps guide your intuition. Right, and, and you know, we can give a little sneak peek to your to your listeners. We got the first copy of Amy's art book yesterday. She, there's a coffee table art book that'll be out as soon as the supply chain interruptions are ironed <laughs> out a little bit, <laughs> which is actually has delayed the the um, you know the wild goddess a little bit too. But but it's it's 323 color plates of Amy's art and. You'll be seeing things in her work for the rest of your life. There's so much rich art in there. Do you I, have I a, like I, putting the... Go ahead. Oh, no. Do you have a, was there a target time for the release, or is it just completely up in the air now? Well, you know, there's just so many... Uh, our car dealers said they can't get new cars, can't get parks. This is something that's affecting every industry, but it's also... Our books are printed in China, so on the West Coast, there's 100 freighters backed up. Um, I mean, the holding goods that can't be um, unloaded. Unloaded, and there's containers that there's no truckers to ship what's in them. So our wild goddess is sitting in one of those containers right now. It was supposed to come out uh, September 12th. Now it's supposed to come out October 12th. So we have our fingers crossed, but we can't take it personally because no. you know it's a, it has a far-ranging effect. What and our art book's supposed to come out. November 12th, or no, November 23rd. So we, we were, like you said, we've been so prolific, especially during the pandemic where we really shut out the outside world, and, and so many of us did. And, and we were given so many opportunities from various publishers that wanted um, new projects from us. Yeah, my Mindful, our, our excuse me, my, our Mindful Astrology <laughs> book uh, came out in April, and it's in its third printing already. I don't know how they snuck them over the shipping, but they, they somehow got you it. You were on the second episode of my show talking about that. That's exactly. right. Exactly. So I, yeah. I think you you know, people are luck. reading more books because they have more time or they're developing more skills because they have time, which that's one of the silver linings, I guess, of yeah. the pandemic. Yeah, everybody's uh, a get... monk. No, I was just going to say everybody's a monk. a monk in a cave. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they're starting to come out. Um, if we can go back to the Wild Goddess Oracle just a little bit, we'll be breaking again in a second. I, I'm just intrigued because there are some spreads in here. I mean, every every book, every deck has its unique spreads that work nicely with the theme of the deck. But mm -hmm. you have a Law of Attraction spread. Mm -hmm. I've, well, I have not seen that one. Thank you. We made it up. <laughs> I, know. Well, I mean, oh. we make everything up. You know, we're creative. That's what we urge everyone to do because somebody made up all these things to begin with. So we're just adding to the tradition and, you know, with our input and what we see works for us and what we've experimented with, you know, doing so many readings like yourself. You learn from every reading you do and what's required and what may be missing or what um, turns somebody on to, to a whole and what works in each situation. So a lot of attraction, what we did a lot of attraction Oracle deck that came out many years ago. That's still one of our best sellers, but I, you know, I like the idea of really kind of seeing what you're attracting and being aware of what your mindset is that might be blocking or attracting you. So the first card in that one identifies the goal and is your first step. The second card are the it describes the qualities that can aid in achieving that goal. And the third card is the obstacles in the way of manifesting your goal. And the fourth card is the best 
visualization you can do to achieve the goal. So I like that spread a lot. So the fourth one could give you an archetype that you could work with. Yes. Uh, to to actually see your goal coming into being. Yes. Well, I, I think we all have to kind of ex- play and expand our minds to see habitual thinking and how to break out of that. And unfortunately, one habit is that I have to take a break at 20 till the hour. <laughs> so I'm going to pause right now for us to go to a brief break and we'll be back. How would you like navigational tools you can use on your own? Visit my site, empowermentunlimited.net, and click the Shop tab. There you'll find lots of talks and guides explaining the big influences at work now, like Saturn in Aquarius and Uranus in Taurus. You'll also find a variety of guided visualizations for relaxing, clearing your energy, or getting to know planetary archetypes. That address again, empowermentunlimited.net. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We're talking with Amy Zerner and Monty Farber about their new deck, The Wild Goddess Oracle, and lots of other things. Uh, I would like to talk about a, a, one other spread, at least. You have a spiritual growth spread that's nine cards. It actually kind of looks like a, a pictogram for a person, in a way, the way they're stacked up. But maybe that's just me. Um, and, and I noticed that it's, uh, it's in a very, it's not in a linear fashion, the way the cards are read. It's like a giant looping spiral starts in the center and goes around, but they're stacked. Um, how did this come about? Any of it? (laughs) It just happened one morning. Oh, I'm putting the cards this way. Well, I think we were experimenting. Um, you know, at that point, we ha- we always make a mock-up of our, our deck to use and make sure all the kinks are out and that we've covered everything. We start playing with it and using it. And I, it gave us an opportunity to to add more spreads and show people how they could play with it more. But this is sort of a, a snapshot of this cer- spread that describes where you're at now, what your goals are, positive points, underlying problems, the best way to proceed. It's like um, when you're looking to grow emotionally and spiritually, which hopefully (laughs) we all are trying to do that, right? I I mean, I think people particularly that are drawn to oracles, they want to grow and understand. And Amy was born during a Uranus station, and I was born during a a Neptune station. And I I think we, we like that make it up quality, go in there, see what you can do, see if it works, and if it works, share it with people. And and to use the cards in different ways. So the first card in this spread is how you see yourself. So that's like a challenge. Sometimes right. we, we're not conscious of that. It, it helps you to do a spread and to shuffle the cards and to put yourself in that headspace, that clear headspace to kind of receive an answer um, helps you gain new perspectives. That's what's so beautiful about it. And it, nothing's etched in stone, but you know, to look at it like maybe you know I am doing this, or maybe I am her right at this moment. Uh, you know, finding that goddess that represents me in the moment. And the second card is what um, my intuition is trying to tell me. You know, I was wondering maybe in a past lifetime as cave people. We actually did do a card deck that was etched in stone. <laughs> <laughs> that Wonderful. could be. <laughs> or you drew it on Maybe. the wall and just That's threw so things funny. at That's it. That's like a s- New Yorker cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. It, it is etched in stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so, um, and, and these aren't reversed. You're just, they're just, they just show Not up and you cards. look at no. them. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we uh, even with the Enchanted Tower, we didn't put uh, reverse cards in there because it sounded too much like a Jackie Mason, you know, the comedian who just passed away. <laughs> it sounded too much like a Jackie Mason routine. Well, if it's upright, it means it's good, but if it's uh, reverse, it means it's not so good, but maybe it is good, but maybe it could be good. <laughs> you know, and, and so we, we saved that... <laughs> We, we save that for for the um, enchanted love tarot because that the, that has upright and reversed long long text for each one. And there's so many jokes. That's a lead in to a joke. I'm going to let it sit right there and ask you about. Oh, <laughs> uh, you 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 seem to have an endless endless. I, I don't think you're tapped out with oracles and decks. A, am I right? There will well, be other things. <laughs> we have a new one. We have a new one coming out in the spring called the Intuition Oracle. Yeah, we just we just <laughs> we just did the manuscript to that. You know, it's I funny. mean, it, it's a vehicle for what I do and what Monty does. I mean, it, when you're an artist, you want people to you want to share your work with people, right? And um, the art world, quote unquote, is an you know it's kind of an elitist world. You have to go to a museum. You have to go to a gallery. Here, people can hold. A whole gallery of my work and use it and use it over and over again and experience words and messages that tell the story of the card. I mean, as an artist, it's a very fulfilling vehicle for my work. Yeah, and it enables, you know, because Amy's original tapestry sells for thousands of dollars. Even her clothing at Berger of Goodman sells for thousands of dollars. But people can buy a, a full, you know, just 78 card Enchanted Tarot art book, or, or the Wild Goddess Oracle is 58, uh, excuse me, is 52, and, and, and this art book, and they can live with it. So it's, it's really important, in my opinion, for people to live with Amy's art. I'm lucky enough to live with the originals, and I think it's had an effect on me. I think they're very healing. I think, and Monty and I have been married for 46 years, so so much of our Life is brainstorming new ideas and creative ideas, and we love our collaboration together. It's sort of what we're put on earth to do. So I, you're right. So far it seems an endless supply of ideas. And if we didn't do that, we'd just be slaves to our cat. <laughs> So many people could identify with that one. Um, can you give us a sneak? Can you give us a sneak peek about the intuition oracle, or is that under wraps? Oh. No, it's all it, it's all designed. It's all edited. We did the final uh, edit pass. You know, when you do a book, you send it in, then the copy editor sends it back, and, and then, then you, you hate them. <laughs> then you fix <laughs> it. Then you make sure every typo is fixed. So we've been through that because you know it's a long process, and this one has um, also fifty-two cards. We did because we kind of like the idea of um, one for a week. You know, As a, a ritual, year. you pick one a week and experience what there is to experience about the meaning and see it in your life and see how it plays out. And that's a great way to learn a deck is to pick a card a week. There's so many mm -hmm. ways you can utilize an oracle, but we really emphasize it comes back and all of our, our books are about intuition, trusting it, enhancing it, um, having faith in yourself. And I think the last year and a half have taught us that we have to really rely on getting the truth from our own intuition and gut feeling and instincts because there's so much mixed messages out there and manipulation and hype and uh, control of the news. So how you, who has time to research every, every scientific research and what's true about that? And this, you have to, it all comes back to your intuition who to have a relationship with, where to go, what, what, how to handle it, what vitamins you should take. I mean, everything, the gamut of mind, body, spirit comes back to making your intuition stronger, and these are tools like weight, you know, like lifting weights that make your, mm -hmm. your, your it's intuition. a muscle that becomes stronger and stronger the more you practice. I once asked Amy if, if she thought there was a common denominator for all the suffering that's caused by human beings, and she said, poor decision-making. And so we dedicated our lives to helping people make better decisions. I actually saw that in one of your bios. I think the bio that comes with the Wild Goddess Oracle mentioned that one. So, so do you, do you, 
I guess you use your own oracles on a or your own decks on a fairly regular basis. Oh yeah, totally. There are kids, you know, we love them. Right. We send That's... them out in the world, and they go to. They're the, College, they go to your house. <laughs> they're the kids that you want to talk back to you. <laughs> but I guess I mean you you probably do you find that you go through one or at different times of life. There's do you cycle through them or are there are certain ones you use for I think certain they have things. A, or? Each have a vibe, you know. It serves a, a certain purpose, like Monty's Karma cards. Um, they're based on astrology, so so they're all the planetary and sign archetypes. So sometimes you're in the mood for that, to get a message that way. The Enchanted Tarot is very dreamlike and kind of triggers those kind of symbols and signs in your life. And the Wild Goddess, you know, it's sort of like the people in you, all the different uh, aspects of your personality. And um, I, I like to combine them. Right now we're having fun combining the wild goddess with the enchanted tarot, and then our creativity oracle is really about the creative process, and right. really, you know, whatever stumbling blocks you might have working on a particular project or some dream that you want to manifest and bring to life. These are really the 80 small steps, one step at a time, that take you in, uh, through your process and everything that we've experienced, rejection, um, letting go, starting over. We, we really put everything we know about the creative process because obviously we're familiar with that. Yeah, and, and, and there's so many people out there doing creative processes and doing Oracle decks. It's very appropriate for that. But in terms of which one we pick, it's like, what do you want for dinner, really? It's, it's, <laughs> Are you in the mood for a salad? Or <laughs> is it dessert for dinner? And, and strangely enough, I was just thinking about it because it was a really good question you asked. Yeah, and I realized we don't use the uh, Enchanted Love Tarot very often because we have a pretty We amazing... have questions about our relationship. Yeah. But we do a, a weekly Zoom show called Ask the Oracles every Monday at 1230 Eastern. And we demonstrate all of our oracles and decks on that show, and people get, um, it's for free, people get mini readings, they get to ask us anything. We get about 50 or 60 people every week, and it's a fun way to keep us in practice and to see how they work for all, the whole gamut of questions. Sometimes people just want to know a message for the week, or sometimes they want to know the next step on the spiritual path, or sometimes... Somebody asked us if they were going to sell their couch. You know, that was kind of a waste of a question. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> uh oh, the boss well, is here. Uh, I will give a, a, a tiny testimonial to the Wild Goddess Oracle. Uh, I ha I have a copy of it, courtesy of your publisher, and it I used it. Something very very puzzling happened with yeah. another person, and I just was looking at it like, what in the world is going on here? So I pulled a card for it and got the mermaid, and I sat and realized that keyed me into the person's sun and moon signs, because they're both water. Oh, oh that's and, interesting, because you know astrology, so it spoke to you that way. Yeah, and then I suddenly thought, oh, I can see this person is feeling like a fish out of water and is ah. very insecure, and that's what's driving this inexplicable behavior <laughs> like oh all right oh, so I, I used it to make sense of a very strange development that's wonderful thank well, you so much because you're one of the first people to actually use it because it's not out in public yet right. but i appreciate that i think that's the thing with the oracles we bring our it triggers your insight so you're insightful that way with the, with the elements, with the elements of astrology, and so it triggered that answer in you that gave you. It, it, it it's a confirmation. That's great. You just made my day. Oh, I'm so pleased. Well, the the very first reader I ever ever went to, who was like a Shakespearean character, a legendary woman in Austin, Texas, named Augusta Hipple. For anybody out there who remembers, she'll be on your knees going, oh my God, someone mentioned Mrs. Hipple, uh, uh, told me that you that you came for psychic confirmation, that you already yeah. knew it, but you were there because you needed psychic confirmation. Yeah. Only she that. said it with a Texas accent, so. Oh, 
Well, I think that that's the key. It's a tool that triggers that because sometimes, you know, our thoughts race or we have monkey mind or we have anxiety coloring or we're like attached. Sometimes we're very attached to wanting a certain outcome. Laying the cards on the table really gives you a new perspective, you know, where you can kind of step out of it for a minute to see and look at it from a different angle and see what answers you get that way. And we know we're very lucky that, you know, we're we're now in our 70s, and we have publishers asking us for projects because they know that we we dedicate ourselves completely and try and come up with the best quality project that we can and to give everything we can. So it's a great confirmation that oracles work because that's what we use to get the deals and that's what we use to design other oracles. Yeah, they're great for business insights and people insights. I mean, sometimes we are confounded by people's behavior. and Like every day. <laughs> we don't want to just we don't want to just judge you know that they pissed us off or whatever we want to go deeper and we want to grow spiritually that way to to help us understand each other and sometimes it's really useful for what's the best way to navigate this like how do how yeah. what do yeah. i do what is the yeah. most beneficial thing for me to do here yeah and, uh, yeah, and sometimes what... it's mundane like driving to new york do you want to take the bridge or the tunnel you know, which will be faster. <laughs> we haven't done that one in a while. Yeah, <laughs> I have. It's still an adventure. Uh, <laughs> but I'm coming at it from a different direction than you are. Um, That's true. Uh, so uh, anything else that you have coming up before we wrap up? You've got it. You've got this one, this the Wild Goddess Oracle coming out. Uh, if the shipping gods are favorable, Yep. Transportation Gods later this month, and then Amy has a book of her own art in November scheduled, right. and, and you've a new deck coming out in the spring, Intuition Oracle. Uh, anything else coming down the line? We have something called the Art of Affirmations. It's a three-deck package also coming out in the spring. Um, years ago, I think it's almost 15 or 20 years ago, we came out with... Um, some early affirmation decks for Chronicle books, and they went out of print quite a long time ago. And so we're repackaging those because people ask for them. <laughs> people ask for them in a new way with my artwork and my two. But it's a three three deck package called the Art of Affirmations, and I think it's wonderful that people are are becoming more aware of the power of intention and the power of. Um, manifestation and divination and all of those things now so it's fun to try it in different ways and uh, to present it for us as authors to present the material in new ways there, well I mean, thank you so much unfortunately we have to go you can find amy and monty at your website please real fast the enchanted world.com thank you Dot so com. much kathy it was great thank to you for being you. here all right bye everyone talk to you in two weeks bye Thank you.